Hi guys, Tracy here with a pocket scrapbooking process video. I'm going to be scrapbooking these photos which are predominantly cut at, well they're printed, at 2x2 two two, and right now I'm just cutting them down with my Creative Memories small um, travel trimmer which I love for, for uh, trimming up these small photos. And so I just skipped ahead in the process a little bit. I did print two of them at a larger size, so most of them are printed at 2x2, two two, and then those two larger ones are printed at 4x4. Four four. So what I'm going to do to start my process is, um, sorry I'm out of frame for a second here, uh, I'm going to set up my photos and organize them according to the four days. So these pocket pages are going to span from Thursday before Easter, uh, Good Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I didn't scrapbook Monday. No, I didn't because I did this on Monday. So. So yes, yeah, so there, so I've just kind of laid them out in order like that, and I'm using those little post-it notes to put the days of the, just, I'm writing Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Saturday, and Sunday, and so I just put them up on my shelf here. I just thought I'd give you a little, a little glimpse at uh, kind of behind the scenes of how I have them set up. So I'm going to scrapbook these day by day, and so uh, what I'm doing here is I have the This Life Noted kit from Scraptastic, I have the March kit here. I'm doing this in very early April, but I haven't received the April kit yet. I live in Canada, so it takes me a little bit longer to get my kits. We, uh, on the design team, we do get our kits just a couple of days before the members do. But um, because I live in Canada, I end up getting mine after most members already have theirs, uh, which is okay. I just have my coffee there. My husband brought me that latte, so I was kind of happy to get a chance to have some nice coffee while I scrapbook. And so I'm just opening the packages of all of the that all of the cards come in. And what I like to do before I get started is just familiarize myself. I've already familiarized myself with the photos that I'm using just in the printing process and trimming them up. So now I'm just looking at the cards so that I, I don't want to forget which cards are in there in case there are any that have relevant phrases and whatnot. Sometimes what I'll do at this phase is if I have a card that I know I want to scrapbook for a certain days photos then I'll put that card in the little pile you guys just saw those little piles of photos I'll put that card in that pile just so that I don't accidentally use that card for something else but I don't think I'm going to do that with uh, anything this day but uh, that's what I sometimes do when I'm when I'm documenting in this way and so, uh, yeah, what I'm doing here is the, the some days of the week actually came in this. So I took out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday, and I put them. And this is just a photo of my area with the with the rub-ons kind of put up so that I can see them, and everything is all laid out so that I can see it. So I put the days of the week uh, in the piles of photos for each of those days of the week so that I can make sure that I use those cut aparts at that time. And this first four by six card with the color banners on it um, was really speaking to me so I decided to make a title card with it. I don't usually do title cards uh, because I just don't do enough pocket scrapbooking to warrant titles so I just use each usually what I do is each cell in my pocket pages is or sometimes there's a couple of cells together that have related photos but usually each cell is just its own little tiny layout and I usually use my pocket pages to scrapbook any photos that either the stories weren't significant enough or the photos weren't nice enough to include in a 12 by 12 layout because most of my scrapbooking is 12 by 12 scrapbooking. So I just used some wax paper here to figure out the placement of my letters. And now that I know where they're going to be placed, the lines on the cards make it pretty easy for me to make that pretty lined up. And with those transparent stickers, I really love to overlap them. So that's what I've done here. I'm thinking about adding something to this card. It just looks a little plain as it is, um, but that was overkill. I do love those, those little... Um, those enamel pieces but it was too much so they were just too bright and too big so I've decided to use this little strip of pluses and I have one too many so I just had to cut one of them off there and I'm going to put the pluses right in front of the 2015. It just kind of fills some of that empty space and I'm just ignoring the word date over there. I did put the year on the same line as what 
you know, it looks like they're sort of asking for the date. So I put the, the year there and I, I really like how that looks. I tried to edit this ahead of time so there wasn't too much blank space because my process videos for pocket layouts tend to be quite a bit longer than my other process videos. Now this is my spray and mister kind of like my splatter box that I use for crops. And so I usually use a giant cake box, but I already had my mists all in this because I had come back from a crop fairly recently. I just, it took me a while to unpack. And so uh, I had it out, so I decided to use it. It's very convenient. Like it, it, I like how everything just kind of closes up and clips together so that it doesn't make a mess anywhere. I might use that for a while longer. I might switch to that instead of using my cake box. So here I'm just, again, kind of familiarizing myself with what's in the kit and deciding what little cut aparts I want to use with what. And here I have a photo of Marcel and the cut apart there just says some of my favorite moments and it's in black. And I'm just going to trim up this three by four card that said Mr. Good Times. And I just trimmed off the extra gray so that it becomes sort of like a little design element. And I made the top kind of two elements line up together and that left me a little space which I just filled in with some enamel dots that came in the kit and I'm doing my journaling here it just says I love hanging out with this guy before school we listen to music and chat while he eats and I'm just going to outline around it it looked a little random like it just didn't look like those elements really went together. So I just did some doodly outlining around it just to kind of make it look cohesive and like it all fits together. I don't know if I achieved that, but that's what I was going for when I did that doodling. So now this card, I love how some of these cards are perfect for, you know, there's phrases on them, but you don't have to use them because if you use a two by two photo, it covers a lot of the phrases quite nicely. So this card that's half green and half white, I'm going to cover the phrase with my photo. I'm going to get to use the word Thursday there from that cut apart. And so see how I'm scrapping all four of the, the center line of my design a page protector. I'm just going to do them all together here. Uh, which isn't which is different than how I've done it in the past so you guys know that I've shifted my well if you follow me you know that I've shifted the way that I do my pocket scrapbooking so that rather than doing it as a whole page I usually just do a bunch of cards and then put them together at the end but because this is one sort of set of events this Easter weekend I am designing it as a whole and so I um so yeah, I'm, I'm just doing all four of these cards at once. So you see how I'm just um, putting different cut aparts on the cards and just kind of decorating them up. I did use my sewing machine. I think I showed a little close up of that. And I'm just using glossy accents to stick that uh, that enamel piece on. And it, it is, it is see-through, so you can see some of the glue, but I don't really mind. It is clear glue, so you, you know you can't see it all that much, but if you look, you can see it. So this one says, now if I had a BMW and a Porsche, they wouldn't be buried in the snow for weeks. So these are our friends, we went to their house and they have a truck and uh, they, because they have a truck, they didn't bother digging out their two cars, which we just thought it was funny to see two such fancy, fancy cars that nobody bothered to, 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 bury, to unbury. Um, here I'm doing some, uh, so the journaling says when we got together that Thursday in December and drove to PEI for Steve's funeral, one of the things we decided that day was to make sure we carry on our Thursday get togethers. Steve's passing reminded us of many things, but one was to cherish the people in your life. And so uh, this is the Thursday night crew. Um, we went to their house. Uh, it, it used to be the six of us would kind of take turns hosting the, the three couples. Um, and so the four of us have decided that we're going to continue to do that. And so um, this was the first time that we got together. Sadly, we, we used to get together every month. Um, we were doing it every week for a while there. We used to watch Survivor every week. Um, but uh, then we were doing it every month once the other 
couples ended up having kids. And uh, once Steve and Sandra moved away to a different province, we tried to keep up doing it. And then we just kind of fell out of it. But then when we got together for the funeral, we really decided that we should get back into it. So we were doing it. And there's another person who has joined us too. So there's five of us now, which is kind of nice. So that's what those center cards were all about. And uh, and now I'm doing this bottom four by six card and I'm just spelling out the the word the words that spell out the name of the farm that we went to that day. So this is moving on to f- to Friday now. Um, and I love the green on this March card and I'm just going to place the photo so that there's just enough room to put the title over to the left. And I love the tone on tone. I absolutely love those green stickers with that green card. I love it. Um, So I'm just going to make these as straight as I can. And I'm also fully justifying them so that they end, they both begin and end right on the edge. And then I just spaced out the words so that they fit nicely. And I just had to double check that my pen was going to work nicely on the card. And I'm just doing my journaling here. It says, Sophie's Brownie group were visiting this maple syrup farm, so we decided to make a family trip out of it. And I always make sure that my words, when I do sideways writing on um, on a layout, I always make sure that my words go uh, in the same direction. So I'm usually always writing from the bottom to the top as opposed to from the top writing down to the bottom. So now I'm just, uh, I wanted to use this photo on this card here with the words written all over it, but I found that it was a little overwhelming for the photo. So I decided to mat the photo on a piece of scrap uh, craft paper first, just to make sure um, that cork doesn't come in the kit. It's just something that I had. I'm just keeping the wood veneer on the cork just to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. And I'm cutting out a couple of words here that I might use in the journaling, but I ended up not using it in the journaling after all. So I did mat that photo on a piece of craft paper, and I think that just gives it a little bit more substance and separates the photo a little bit from the busy background with all those with all that text around it. So I, I like how that looks and there you see it a little bit better now that I've moved it a little bit. And so I'm going to put some rub-ons on this card. And here I actually have more cards than I have space. So I'm going to use a little flip pocket here. It's a three by four um, pocket that's made by Snap. I'm gonna give you a quick look at the packaging here. There it is. So three by four photo flips they're called and they're made by Snap. I've never used them before so this is my first time. And um, yeah, so I just took it out so that I would remember to that that was my plan for this card. And so I just put some, I'm going to put some rub-ons on this. And the, uh, the arrows there, I'm going to put flip up on underneath of it. I'm just going to write it in, with handwriting. And so I'm putting on this day and then all the arrows. And now I'm just going to write flip up. And I'm actually going to, on the back side of this, I'm going to scrapbook, I, I, I'm actually going to put something fairly bulky on the other side of it, and that's on purpose. That's so that this card will actually kind of be obviously not laying down flat, so that you can notice that you're supposed to flip it up. So I'm going to do a little bit of splattering, again in the same box, and I'm, I'm making all of my splattering just be gold for this whole entire spread. That just gives a little bit more cohesion uh, throughout the layout. I'm using glossy accents to adhere all of my enamel pieces. Those pieces are so cool. I absolutely love them. They're exclusive to the kits, and I really love that we're getting these enamel pieces or acrylic pieces. I guess they're probably acrylic pieces. So I'm doing my journaling ahead of time here on a scrap piece of paper just because I've got a set number of lines, and I want it to fit properly, and um, it wasn't fitting properly. So I just made sure that I made my handwriting a little bit smaller so that I could consistently fit a little bit more on each line than um, than what I did on my scrap paper and it ended up working out fairly well. And this is just some journaling about um, how proud we were or impressed we were that Marcel was such a good sport about that night. It didn't, it 
that that morning he had to get up really early and there was something that we did that wasn't really very fair and and uh, he didn't complain too much about it. he didn't complain at all about it and he was a really good a really good sport about it so I was really really appreciative of of what a what a, just what a great guy he is we're really lucky to have him with us this year so that's what that journaling was all about and so you see how it came together there at the end that's what it, the overall layout looks like for the first page and there will be three of these and here's another I just thought I'd show you some pictures of how that flip up that photo flip piece ended up working I've re I'm really pleased with how it turned out so now I'm going to move on and start working on the second page so you see I have another template there and I've been just putting the templates up off to the side and filling in the cards as I go. So this is the first one I'm making on this page. It's actually one of the center ones. And uh, this one is just saying, let me find it here. It says the brownies had their tour, uh, ate breakfast and went on a hike, leaving the rest of us to explore the farm and eat breakfast on our own. And so I just put a little flare badge on that one. And now I'm going to put the little Friday uh, cut apart and I'm cutting it into a little banner and I'm just gonna use my tiny attacher, I believe. Yep, I, I did glue it down first, but then I used my tiny attacher to add a little staple. So I'm liking that one. And now I'm gonna do this happy thoughts card. I love this card. I just love the yellow and white diagonal stripes. It just says, a Friday was a really fun family day. We went to Sugar Moon Farm for breakfast, then went to the QE2 Home Lottery Show Home. Then we headed home for family time at home. Such great memories. I think I use the word home an awful lot in that journaling. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna use my roller date stamp here to stamp out April 3rd, 2015. And I'm using the documented little stamp and that's the Studio Calico ro roller date stamp that I have. And now I have my giant pebbles uh, roller stamp and it uh, has an alphabet on it. So you can make up to 12 letters of whatever you want. So it's a fully customizable stamp. And I'm just rolling out the words, Good Friday. So, and you can just kind of scooch them around so that they make separate words. It doesn't have to be all together. So I just stamped out Good Friday and I'm using basic gray ink there by Stampin' Up. And now I'm changing it to Tracy because it says courtesy of, and I just put Good Friday there, and then it says remembered by, and so I'm just writing my own name. So I'm playing around a little bit with the cells here, and uh, I had forgotten to use those letters, those little words in an, in the other journaling, so I decided to just cover over the relevant words in this one just for a little bit of extra interest and so I could get to use those super cool uh, wood veneer letter things. And so now I've got this highlights card and it has these little strips of paint kind of printed or not paint, but, but tape, like washi tape um, printed onto it. And so I'm just putting my photos and I placed them so that you could see a little bit of tape on either side. And I am doing my journaling. It says making our own sugar on snow, maple candy was fun and delicious. And now I am just going to do some outlining around that. And I'm gonna splatter it with some more gold. And I masked it, but it still made quite a mess on my photo. And I could reprint that photo, but I'm not going to because it doesn't make, it looks like it makes a bigger mess because of the way that the light shines on it. You actually can't see it all that much. So I'm not gonna bother reprinting the photo. It's just pocket pages. I think if it was a 12 by 12 layout, I might, but you don't really notice that there's so much to take in on a pocket page. Little mistakes like that don't make a big impact, so. At least for me, I don't, I don't care about that kind of stuff. So now I'm trying to write out the word dreaming, which clearly is not going to fit. But if I put the ING down here like this, it's going to fit uh, reasonably well. So one thing that I don't like is that these letters really lose their readability when they're layered over the photo. And so I'm just going to take my marker and go around the outside of them just to increase the readability a little bit. I did some journaling on the edge there. It just says QE2 Home Lottery. And uh, now I'm taking my 005 pen, which is the thinnest pen that I have. And I'm just outlining all the way around the outside edges. And there, I just zoomed in a little bit more so you could see because it occurred to me that you can't really see at that distance. So there's that. I'm just putting that up on my template. 
and you'll you'll see my template I think in a little while I had to speed this one up quite a bit more I know you know some people prefer it be sped up so that I uh, can kind of fit more in a video and the video is a little bit shorter and other people prefer it to be um, slow so I'm I'm not gonna be keeping this speed for my 12 by 12 process videos but for the pocket pages I really have to do it at four times the speed or eight times the speed because um, it's just too long otherwise it was gonna be like 45 minutes or something like that so here I am and here's something that I sort of regret I'm using this black and white Baker's twine to stitch this uh, enamel piece or acrylic piece in place I'm just using my Amy Tangerine poker there. And uh, I kind of regret this. I don't love the look of it. I wish I had just used plain black twine and I do have some plain black twine. The other option would be to unravel it and just take out the two white pieces and sew with only the black pieces. I think that would have looked a little bit better because the white thread looks a little dirty. It's just not what I like it to be. So there I go um, with my mist. And uh, my mist, I didn't close it properly the first time. So now I'm realizing that I forgot to press record for a section. So I'm gonna just talk you through this. So here I go with that. Okay, so I just realized that I had the video camera turned off for a good part of what I was doing and I can't remember where I left off. This might have been the last thing that you guys saw me do, which is a little filler card. And what I did for this one was this was a four by six card that said so much, so little time, so much to do. So I cut it in half and then I also trimmed it down a little bit, the tops and the bottom, so that it would make a mat for this photo of the baking I did on the Saturday between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And then this was a card that I cut apart. It was just it was just a three by four card that said this day totally called for so I just cut around I fussy cut around this day totally called for and I love doing that with these cards with the phrases written on them I've done it I did it in my last uh, this life noted pocket page and I really liked the look so I decided to do it for this one too and this sort of coordinates with this even though it's a different phrase it's the same kind of font and so then I just went into my stash because the letter stickers that came with this kit are just not the right size, like baking wouldn't fit in the yellow, and I didn't really want to make it green, so I just went into my stash and got a really old set of sassafras, which I've been hoarding all of these sassafras alphabets. I have about 20 of them, and of course sassafras is no longer in existence, so these are like gold for me. I love, love, love this font. Um, so in, I picked the purple because I don't really use purple very much, but it's a very eastery color, so I decided to make the baking be in this really cute purple font. And I'm just about to go and run it through my sewing machine. This is a Becky Higgins Project Life journaling card. I think it's from the Jade collection. It was actually on my floor because my cat knocked over my entire been my entire tray of Project Life cards and so I was looking for something to, to back this with and I pulled out these I have some like when I have six by six paper pads that I'm almost done with what I usually do is I just cut them down to four by six papers and I stick them in my Project Life tray that way when I'm pocket scrapbooking if I need a background that's four by six it's easy for me to just pick a pattern paper from an old six by six pad this was I don't remember which pad this was from. It might have been Cosmo Cricket or something. Um, so it's very old and it was too dingy. Like it was too, I'm still gonna use this gray one because it's very Eastery and I think it'll look nice with these photos right here. Um, but this one was too dirty looking, which is, you know, the look that they were going for, but it just doesn't work with what I'm doing right here. So I decided to just grab one of these Becky Higgins cards and uh, I have a bunch of cards. They're mostly Becky Higgins, but I have a couple of snap cards as well. I just keep a stash of them for reaching in and filling in when sometimes if I don't have the right pattern in a kit or if I'm um, pocket scrapbooking outside of my kit, which I don't really do very often anymore because I find that the Scraptastic kits really do provide me all the cards I need. But in this case, I really liked this one for a background, so that's what I went with. And I already have a use in mind for the 4x6 cards that are left in this kit. Are there any left? I cut this one up. That might be all that there were. That might be why I went into my stash for this one. 
Okay, so that's it. I'm going to get back to the process now. So I'm just taking that card over to my sewing machine to run it through uh, to get some stitches across the title. And so hopefully you can see that there. And I'm just going to do some journaling it by hand just underneath. It says, I spent the day making bread and desserts. And then in brackets, it says, yes, me, because I never bake. Scott's the one who bakes around here. I do bake bread fairly often, um, but it's very unusual for me to make desserts. So, um, and they actually didn't turn out that well. So... Yeah, of course, you know, that's an argument for baking more, right? So you can get well practiced at it, but I use it as an argument for baking less because it didn't turn out, so I'm done with it now. <laughs> um, I'm just putting some of these acrylic pieces from the kit on this card, and this is a card from last month's kit, from the February kit, actually, um, and that's because I did run out of cards. The reason I run out of cards is that I don't you know, the, these kits are kind of set up so that you can um, just stick some 4x6 photos in, and I never use 4x6 photos anymore, so um, I always run out of the 4x6 cards because I tend to need more cards than a person using 4x6 photos would need, because the photos would fill up a lot of your pockets. So that's so I usually just hang on to any four by six cards from any previous kits. If I happen to have any left over, I always hang on to them. And then I also, also will dip into my stash, either pattern paper or some Becky Higgins cards or whatever I have on hand. So for this one, these two were really easy cards. I didn't like the phrases on it. It just didn't seem relevant. So I just stuck some uh, of those cut aparts on there and I just stapled them in place. And they're sort of matching cards because there are two photos that go together so one is a picture of Sophie making the smoothie and then the other is the picture of the smoothie that we left out for the Easter Bunny so there's my uh, template again and before I finish off this one I'm just gonna put a little bit of splatters and gold again on this one and again I got some on the picture but that's okay so there's how this one looks and now I have one more left to do so that one goes up till the end of Saturday, I think, and this one starts on Sunday. So there's my template again, and it's just a piece of cardstock with hand drawn, like I just used a ruler to to lay out the Becky Higgins Design A layout on it so that I, and for this one, I'm going to design it right on my workspace. I will zoom out in a few minutes, I think, and I'm going to use that word wood veneer as a design element. So it's going to be a filler card here. I really like it so much. I wanted to use, I couldn't decide whether to use it as a whole piece or to use the little phrases. So I thought if I back it on a piece of pattern paper, then I get to use both. So I, I cut out a couple of the phrases, but I left most of them intact so I could use it as a whole piece. Just had to trim down one of those photos a little bit. And because I'm getting down to my last page and my last few photos, I need to kind of plan this page a little bit more. Just because I don't want to, you know, have two photos left at the end. I want to make sure that they all fit on this space. And so again, those bottom two 4x6 cards are cards from the February kit. And I'm just cutting some banners into some of these strips that came with the kit. They're just cut apart that I cut at the very beginning. You probably saw me do that. And that filler card there with the stars on it is one that I had made before, like before for the other page, but I had a feeling it wouldn't fit on the other page, so I knew it would probably end up on this page. So I'm going to use this gray piece that I cut off from that uh, phrase on the mar on the on the very first page. I used a phrase that says Mr. Good Times, and so that's just the gray part that I cut off from that. And this, what I'm making right now, is going to end up being my very favorite card on the whole layout. It's not very elaborate or anything, but I just really love how it turns out. I love yellow and gray together, and oh, I just love it. It's so cute. And this is the sandwich that I have once a year. It's peeps and peanut butter and Nutella on a toasted English muffin, and it is so delicious. I absolutely love it. I love the little crunchiness of the, of the sugar on the outside of the peeps. Just love how it crunches in your teeth. It's probably like the most fattening, horrible, um, high sugar breakfast that you could ever have. So I would not recommend that you eat that regularly, but <laughs> I have one once a year because I absolutely love them. I invented it a couple of years ago. 
I think I, well, I invented it. Somebody else might have thought of it at the same time, but so now I wanted to decorate the, up the side of this and I wanted to make it very Eastery because it's the picture of the candy. The kids don't usually get any um, toys or anything from the Easter Bunny, but they usually get a little basket of candy and it has our little basket of decorated eggs that we made and the three baskets and okay, that sort of thing. Okay, so again, I'm not sure how much of this I recorded and how much of this I did not. I seem to be forgetting to press record this time around, so my apologies that this process video is not all, <laughs> all that great, um, but I'll just show you what I did. So I'm just going to be putting this wood veneer piece in as it is with a few missing pieces. I couldn't decide whether I was going to use it as a whole or use the little pieces inside of it, so I used some of the pieces and then I'm also going to use it as a whole. That way I get the best of both worlds. Then for this one, I just took a four by six card and I attached a four by four photo to it and so it overlapped like that. I just used my grid mat to figure out how long. Actually, no, I think I, I used a card as a template. That's how I did it. Um, just to make sure that it was the right size. And then I stamped this little chick from the stamp set. And so I stamped him in gray and then I colored him, I actually colored him with Wink of Stella markers in pink and yellow and gold. I don't have many of these, I just have this many, but I used the GL yellow, I don't know what GL stands for, but GL yellow and GL gold, glitter gold maybe, and glitter yellow. Uh, that's what his belly and beak are, are in the yellow, and then the gold is his legs, and then I used GL dark pink to color in his head and wings and body. So he's a pink little chicky, and uh, then I just went over him with a marker just because his lines were uh, were stamped in gray, and once I colored him in, the lines were, they weren't really disappearing, but I just wanted to make him look a little bit more bold. I stamped the Happy Easter phrase from the same stamp set, uh, and, and those are March stamps from stamp from um, the Scraptastic Kit Club. And so uh, uh, I stamped the Happy Easter in Melon Mambo by Stampin' Up! And then I just added the Sunday tab here. And that's what I did for that card. I don't know if I showed you guys me making this one. I just took those yellow letters and lined them up there. And I cut that strip into a banner and put that there. I really love that card. It's very plain, but I really love it. I just did the journaling here and I took a V and I made it into a little arrow to point to the picture that that journaling is for. And then with this one, I just put the photo on this plus pattern paper card and cut out a gray banner. That's out of some of the, uh, the another card that I cut apart to use the phrase. I just cut down the phrase and so I had some of this left. So I just did my journaling on that. and. For this one, I took the clothespin card. This is from a different kit, and so is this. It's from the February kit, I believe. And so I took that card, and um, I just cut down some of the phrases, and I did a tiny bit of journaling there. And now I'm just about to do this card. I'm almost done. All right, so here I am doing my last card. My Sharpie marker is a disaster. It's always, it leaves big amounts of ink on my fingers, so I always run it through a baby wipe before I use it. Uh, I'm just adding some cut apart. So the bottom one says it's all about that blank, no blank. And so it's all about the turkey, no ham, because we usually do a turkey or we usually do a ham for Easter. But uh, this year, I just really, really wanted a, a turkey. And usually we don't host Easter. And so I usually don't have any say over what we eat at Easter. I do like ham and I not going to complain about ham, that's for sure, um, especially when someone else makes it. But uh, since we were hosting, I decided to go all turkey this year. And so we had a full turkey dinner, just like we would at Thanksgiving or Christmas, which was really nice. Um, because now we have all kinds of leftovers. So I added some rub-ons. And there's how it turned out. So that's the whole... Um, last spread. Hi guys, sorry for the glare. I just wanted to show you how this uh, pocket turned out. It's the first time I used one of these snap 
three by four photo flips. It comes in a package like this with these little three by four pockets. I also bought the four by sixes, but I'm not using them today. And uh, they were $5.25 at my local scrapbooking store. And it came with how many? I think 12? Yeah, 12 of them. And this is how it works. So I just, um, so you just take off the adhesive strip and it's completely clear once you remove that white adhesive strip and you uh, glue it to or adhere it to the um, layout in such a way that this is falling right where you want it to fall. So I just kind of placed it so that it was covering, the photo was covering the journaling that goes with the photo so that it uh, lined up nicely and then I just pressed it down. It looks okay. Um, I think it would look even better if it was not on a decorative card. So I think the fact that this is so open, it makes it a little bit easier to see this because there's so much white space on this. Whereas if this, you know, if I had uh, put it on a card, I could always shuffle these cards around that had something on it, it would be a little bit less obvious that there's an extra strip on that. But even with it being obvious, it still, it doesn't take away from the card above it or anything like that. If the pocket is a little bit bigger, than a Becky Higgins pocket, so that's something to keep in mind. It does kind of extend on either side of the pocket ahead uh, uh, on top of it, um, but I don't really mind that. So, and I think that's just because it's a different brand than the page protectors that I use. So that's how it looks. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a really great scrappy week.